Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is a maintenance day. So that wobbly tire is not a wobbly tire. It's actually a dead wheel bearing. Probably hear that better. So yeah, there you see it. And not only that, that particular rim is a little bent, but it's not a showstopper. I'm not changing it. I'm gonna continue running it. It's been bent for a while. Um, but yeah, I got the truck all ready to go. I took the wheel off. <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm not swapping just the wheel bearing because I have a spare axle, the, the non-locking axle that came out of the truck about a year ago. Uh, has good bearings in it, so I'm gonna um, take that out. I'm just gonna swap the entire half axle piece, pull it out and plug the new one in and transfer the brakes over. That's where I'm at today. It's a Sunday, it's a leisurely wrenching day. It's about 60 degrees outside, but um, I just wanna get this done and have my truck back up again. It was getting noisy if you noticed if some of you may have noticed, if you have good sound, in the Borrego Springs uh, video, you could actually hear the vibrations in the background um, when, I'm, when I'm in the dash cam that's pointing backwards. You can hear it. It sounds like a, a train rolling down the tracks. Um, that's the bearing. That's how loud it was. And I was, you know, first when I left on the trip, I turned up the radio and I couldn't hear it. But then when I was coming back that day, uh, I could hear the noise over the radio, so I'm like, okay, it's time to address it. That thing's been, the noise has been there probably the last three trips, I think. So that bearing went pretty quick. And it's because it is a junkyard axle and it had a leak. Um, when I pulled it off the truck, that side, this particular wheel had a, a wheel seal leak because the whole back side of it was, you know, slathered in gear oil. And usually when they do that, that oil uh, flows through the wheel bearing. The wheel bearing in there is sealed, it's got grease. But that gear oil will get through that wheel bearing and it'll actually wash out or thin out the grease. And that after that, it causes the bearing to go out. Um, so that's what happened here. I was anticipating it would go out, but at the time I put this axle in, I just wanted it in. I didn't really care. I knew it would hold up for a while, if not forever. Um, but now it died a year later, which is okay. I'm just going to plug the other one back in there and, and call it a day. I have a mixed match of things because even this axle, some of the, one of the axles has the, uh, anti-lock sensor, uh, gear and one side doesn't. And my truck never had the anti-lock um, axles in it, but I believe that it has one, like somebody put a used one in it. So my, I mean, my truck's a hodgepodge anyway. There's like parts from all sorts of stuff on it. But anyway, that's, that's what's going on now. All right, get some tools going. So I got to release the brake. I do have my drums are old and they have the groove in there. So I have to back off the uh, um, the shoes, the brake shoes a little bit to pull the drum off, use the tool. I need a little poker. Um, I usually use one of these to push the little tab in on the ratcheting wheel. And then gonna need a 916 wrench or 14, that'll work too. A ratcheting one, <clears throat> get another one to break it loose. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter uh, brake line tool. It's this guy right here. I'm also, while I'm in there, I'm gonna remove that brake wheel cylinder out because that half piece axle is going back out in the yard and I'm just gonna save that wheel cylinder because it's good. They're OEM, I like the OEM ones. Um, so I need a tool for that. That's gonna be a, a 10 millimeter. Grab that guy right here. 
<clears throat> grab a little ratchet to go with it. Should have got a shopping cart. That's to remove the cylinder out of the wheel. And I think that's it for now. I'm gonna pop this um, rubber piece out over here, just like that. Then in there, you kind of poke around in there until you feel this springy thingy. I think it's right there. So you see the screwdriver kind of bouncing or springy. Now I gotta figure out which way it needs to go. Okay, it goes like that. So you basically turn that ratcheting wheel in there. You know how it goes. There's the brake drum. This is the parking brake cable. I'm gonna take that. Don't lose the little spring washer. Put that over there. I'm gonna loosen the brake line real quick. This is the only part that is sucks about this is you gotta break the brake line. So you gotta bleed it, bleed the system. But my 11 year old is more than competent on working the pedal. So I usually summon him. There, that's loose. All right, I need one more piece. I need a little pusher for one of these spring things. I know a lot of us do it with pliers or whatever, but there is an actual tool for it. Um, you'll get to see it today. It looks like this. Should get a little pale. I'm losing some brake fluid. There's my little cup. I um, Now I, I could have put something on the rubber piece to not drain all of the brake fluid, but I sort of let it do its thing and drain out because that way it's part of like flushing it I guess it just drains some of the old stuff out and then you pump the new stuff so I don't try to like um, prevent it from leaking out I just let it run its course I'm gonna unhook the the parking brake cable right there it's not it's just a little short piece for the lever it comes off uh, sometimes you can un -sh shoehorn these um, with all the springs intact if you're just transferring it sometimes they're like crazy crazy hard so I'm gonna try to undo it There it goes. It's not how I, that's not how I intended it to come off, but oh well, it just happens. I'm gonna undo the four bolts that hold the whole assembly on, which I believe is the 9 16th wrench. This is where that other wrench comes in handy. Do one of these numbers. You can kind of see it. There's four bolts or four nuts that hold these on. That's why I get the ratcheting one too. my ratcheting wrench
All right, so those are loose. I'm gonna remove that um, cylinder real quick. All right, there's the wheel cylinder. So these are stock, the stock ASINs. I love these. I'm gonna clean it up and restore it. I'll kind of show you how I do it too later. So now I'm gonna pull the axle out. And also do note that the truck is leaning. Uh, there's a reason for that. That's why I don't use my lift for this job because, you know, with the truck leaning, all the oil in the axle and the rear end sloshes over to one side the other side that you're working on which means when you pull this out you don't get this whole giant swoosh of oil coming at you so at this point i'm just going to pull it out try not to damage the seal too so don't just like drop the axle down. Try to get the weight off of it. Like so, get my microphone cable out of the way. Yeah, that's how it comes out. So now I have this entire piece um, with the bearing and everything that comes out of the tube. I got this O-ring I replaced, so I know it's good. I'm just gonna clean that up before I put the new one in right here. Um, I'm gonna go and scavenge the new one out of the yard. Take my tools. All right, so there's the other axle. I just gotta lift it so the oil doesn't drain out because it is, um, Still has the oil in it. It's even the right, it's even facing the right way. So I don't have to move all that crap. Well, lesson learned, um, the ABS axle and the non-ABX axle, um, the actual axle is not interchangeable because um, the seal ring location. So if you look at it um, on this one, this one has an extra ring for the seal. And um, the other one doesn't. The other axle's thinner through here, so you can't put the other ring. Because for the ABS axle, it, there's a space inside the tube where the sensor is that there's no oil. So I'm gonna have to fix this part, put a new bearing and get those two rings pressed out. Which is going to be a little bit more work. Yeah, well, we learned something. Um, so, you could see on the other axle, the seal was way out here. And on this axle, the seal is further pushed in. So, I got to change this out. I'm going to order the, the bearing and I'm going to order the new seal ring which is this guy right here because this guy is worn out uh, I do have new seals in there but this guy is worn out and I don't want to reuse it I think the book recommends replacing it anyway so um, gotta get that in the press and you know push it out 
but not not too big of a deal i do have to reconfigure the press over there to get it out half the work is cleaning up because i gotta drop this thing way down to fit the the axle piece in there Oh, that's cool. Oh, God. Oh, we're wasting something? Whoa. Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. What? Oh, that is cool. Bring it over here. Okay. Whoa. Is that like welding? Are you gonna get that piece really hot? You know why I get it hot? Why? Because that ring is going to expand. How? It's going to get, when something gets hot, it gets bigger. Like a hot air balloon? Yeah, kind of. Diddy, can you... Uh... How come when I get hot, I don't get bigger? I Whoa. might have to just burn it off of there. Whoa! Are sparks hot? Yeah. Can sparks burn fire? Yes. Yeah. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, look out. Hot metal coming. <laughs> it still smells. Yep, there that goes. Hey. Let's get that bearing out. Hold on. <coughs> what's, what's, what's wrong? It's what's not wrong? It smells bad. Can I do something with the handle? Like? And it chisels. Bam, bam, bam. That's the bearings. Can I chisel something? The what? Chisel something? I can wash this and you can use it as a toy. Mike? That bearing is dead. How are we going to use it? We're not. It's just junk. I mean, how are we going to use it as a toy? It's fun. <laughs> I don't know. This, we're yeah. just gonna have to wash it. So, yeah, that bearing is seized. Um, it's Look too hot to touch, but it doesn't turn. All right, so new parts are on the order. There were 20 something dollars for the kit. It's got Let's the spacers, that. the clip. Are you done hammering? It's got the spacers and the clip, and one of these I can reuse. Obviously, that guy is junk. I burned it off. All right, welcome back. A About a week or something has passed. Um, I've been paused for a week, just doing, busy with other stuff and waiting on, mostly waiting on parts. It is Super Bowl Sunday today. And um, I am planning to watch Super Bowl, but it is morning, and I got want to put this bearing back in. So I got a few parts. I first ordered a thirty-dollar bearing kit, which included, you know, a new new seal ring, a new bearing, and seals and things, and the clip. This is the outer boot. And um, the, the bearing I got is, an, is the wrong one. It's got a extra lip on it. It's designed 
for a different year. I could have made it work. I could have machined, you know, one of these old rings. I could have machined it down uh, the right width to make it fit. But the bearing is like extremely poor quality. Um, it's a no brand uh, China and straight out of the box it just it didn't feel good or the bag it didn't even have a box it just came in a Amazon bag um, the rest of the parts kind of came in in something but it was just I don't know wasn't wasn't thrilled with it so I ordered a, a Timken so this the bearing alone was uh, I think $80 shipped off of Amazon. It took a few days to get here. Uh, it feels much superior to the no, the no brand bearing. I'll show you just some of it here real quick. This is the old bearing that I took out. It's been washed, um, but you can kind of hear it. This thing is uh, definitely was the problem. Here's the you know, here's the uh, the no brand bearing, and I can, you know, like the grease is uneven or something in there, um, and the, the the seal around it isn't even. It's like really weird. You can't, I can't focus there with the camera, but you can see it's pushed in right there. Um, like it's just. You know, you can look at the seal and you can tell it's not like great. But I, um, I'm i going to take one of these spare rings and I'm going to machine it. I'm going to repack the spare ring with some synthetic grease. I don't know what's in there. And it's going to be a you know, roadside kit. I'm just going to throw it in the spare box under the seat. Carry more heavy stuff. Uh, add more weight to the truck but anyway but the funny thing is is when I took this thing apart it already had a no brand Chinese bearing in it and not only that the the seal ring I don't know if you can see it it's got a taper on it uh, it was in there backwards so when you were putting it in um, you know into the seal which this is the seal you know, you were putting the square edge into the seal first and not this way. I checked the book. I do have um, the big, thick, two-volume Tacoma book for my, for my year of truck. So that comes in handy for references. Um, and I checked it, and sure enough, it was on there backwards. So somebody completely Mickey Mouse it. Um, if you look at the the new Timken came with a new seal ring, which you can just even look at the the seal ring, and you can look at the the surface on it is much more smooth. You know, you can if you feel it next to the mic. This is the this is the this is the no brand Chinese one. You feel my fingernail right next to the mic this is the Timken you don't hear anything so you see how coarse this one's been it's not even ground I think it's just machined or or very rough so I'm gonna use the Timken seal ring um, the bearing itself the Timken bearing is far superior you can tell the seal is uh, on the side is much better quality it looks stronger this bearing feels smooth straight out of the box um, compared to you know the non brand this one like you can hear stuff in there I don't know if it's air bubbles or what's going on in there but that's what was in the truck to begin with so on top of it getting oil through it you know it wasn't a good quality bearing and I was like okay I'm not gonna put it back in because I don't want to do the job again two years later 
for a year later. But that's what we're doing now. I got most of it cleaned up. I got um, the back plate and um, and the bearing housing is all cleaned up. I gotta clean this a little bit, this surface a little bit more. That's where the O-ring sits. That's what seals it from um, getting water in there. If you go through the river or something. But that's where we're at with that. I also took apart the OEM wheel cylinder. I went through it. Uh, it's clean and put back together, but it does have some scratches in the bore. Uh, it will work, but I'm like, oh, let me pull another one. So I went and I pulled another one off of the axle out there in the yard. And I'm gonna take this one apart, see if the bore is a little cleaner, more smooth. And I'll use that. This one had probably about 195,000 miles on it. This one had 235,000 on it at the time I put it on. And mine, like my miles are more long distance. My truck was never used as a, as a uh, you know, local driver. It was a, always a highway truck. So my guess is the older one, the one that came with my truck originally, is probably in better shape, but I could be wrong. But I, I got it all apart. I'm just gonna take a look at it, clean it up, and pick the better one. They are both the same. They're a ASIN 7.8s. Um, they're identical, one's a 2000, one's a 96, but it's all interchangeable. Anyway, that's the axle that this is gonna go on to. So I gotta get the bearing on there, but I gotta get this whole thing in through that housing, so I'll be doing some pressing. I gotta reset up the press. I gotta move this crossbar back up so I can put the assembly in there and support it. I dug out my bearing buster, so I'll probably use those. And I have a, I have some uh, like round things for removing hub bearings out of the front. I'll probably use those as support and other things. I also have a box of things that I use, old bearings. I use it as a press aid. You know, a lot of these, I got stuff like these tubes for support and things I made over the years that helped me press things in and out, even a piece of muffler tube, um, whatever works. But anyway, let me get this press set up and get this axle piece back together. Install this bearing real quick. Tool for that real quick. Try one of these. Maybe this guy. There we go. Try this one here. So there's the bearing. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this ring right here to help set this up on the press like that uh, to get the axle through roughly.
The new seal is the wrong one also. It's the wrong dust boot. But the old one is in pretty good shape because they apparently they did replace it at one point. Uh, I'm gonna just clean up the old one. And ultimately it's just a you know river crossing and a dust boot. So it's not like you're driving submerged all the time, but it's in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna reuse this. I will um, apply a new grease to it. It goes over here. So that's where this fits. Just over that. I'm go install this. So there's the ring that I'm using. That way I'm pushing on the bearing and not on the actual back plate. And the bearing isn't a really hard push. It uh, goes in fairly easy. So there's the there's the new bearing installed. So now I got to reconfigure to put the uh, the rings back on it. So there's the bearing. So now I got to fit these guys in there. I'm probably gonna reuse one of these. So now I got to set up to push this ring on. I need a ring that fits that. Go figure, exhaust piece. Let's see if I find another one. This may work. I got a machine that out, it's broken. Let me fix this tool. This one's a little stronger, but it's all, it's been hammered on way too much. I got these from somewhere else. So I'm gonna take care of this really quick. All right, so that's fixed. Yep. 
So this is going to be my tool. Actually, I almost don't even need the press for that. That's it right there. Put the snap ring in. See if it lines up. It may not line up, but I had lined up. Look at that. So there's a snap ring with the correct spacer that went right in just like it's supposed to. So now it's time for the the oil ring and there is a special um, space right here and it's got to have the correct spacing for the seal for it to fit the seal and it's actually in the book so I gotta go get my um, my phone I took a picture of the page so or wait it's maybe on my computer all right it's it's ready for the install I put grease on that I'm gonna put it in there this guy here I'm gonna put it into the seal and then see what it looks like that way it'll kind of help me gauge that the ring is in the correct position I keep uh, forgetting to film it happens when I get going too much just uh, just tightening it all back up putting the slip the axle in and getting the back plate tightened up our right, back plates on there and the axle I just got to put the wheel cylinder in, the parking brake piece, I had to take it out. And then the shoes are going to go back on it. Wheel cylinder installed. This one is a pain in the butt. It's this top spring that's got to go in there. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you really got to fight it. There. All right, vice grips did the trick. So now I got to just hook the parking brake up. This goes right there. like that so that all works you can also see how the ratcheting wheel there works every time you pull your when you pull your parking brake it actually adjusts your drum brake so watch I'll pull the parking brake and you'll see the ratchet thing work and if it works you know, if it's not all rusted up, it actually, every time you pull it, so it's good to use your parking brake occasionally so your rear brakes stay adjusted. Put this drum on.
righty, time to bleed the brakes. Okay, now we gotta summon Junior to go pump the pedal. Okay, step on the brake. Okay, let up. Step on it. Are you standing on it? Am I standing on it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not standing on it, but I'm stepping on it. Okay. Okay. Push. I'm pushing. Harder. Harder. Huh? Harder. Harder. Hmm. I'm stand there. What? Just move your foot. Okay. Pump it up. Done. Yes. Finally. So the repair is a success. Test drive was good. Doing one more last test drive. I uh, I had to re you know bleed the brakes a little more and do a, one more adjustment. Uh, pedal seemed a little soft to me, but it's been a while since I drove the truck. It's always never the same when you break down the system and put it back. So. But it'll figure itself out over time if there's any, uh, you know, air in there. It'll uh, it'll bubble out through the top eventually, or something. If not, I'll I'll do one trip and um, bleed it again um, after the next trip. Kind of shake it up a little bit in there. But I think that's it. Done with the repair. Hopefully the next video is a adventure video out driving around or something. All right. Well, thanks for watching and until next time.